going on guys? Today I'm going to test out the Polar Pro Switchblade along with the dive filter kit. Now I'm really excited because I'm in a secret location, a secret little beach that no one really knows about. It's in the middle of nowhere in Cuba, okay? And as you can see, this water is crystal clear, beautiful. There's a lot of fish down there and we're going to get a lot of good shots. Now the nice thing about this filter is that you can open it up. It has a magnifying glass on the front and then it's got a red filter here. And the other kit comes with, I have both a red and a magenta filter. If the water's blue, you want to move, use the red filter. If the water is green, you want to use the magenta filter and you'll get the right tones and everything won't become as blue. So further down you go, everything looks blue and you don't get the nice colors of all the different fish. So this really helps out a lot. Now, if you just want to switch back and forth, what you can do is you just open this up and I can switch from shooting normal to I shoot with the magnifying glass. Now this magnifying glass right here, this lens, allows me to get really close. It's a macro lens. So I can get all the fish and the coral really close. And then I can just move it here and put on this filter and then I can get all the fish to really pop out. And I can use both of them together if I want to zoom in and get those macro shots, but also get the filter to make it look really good. So we're gonna test that out right now. In this first secret location, I went snorkeling, but I'm also gonna show you another place where I went scuba diving. This way you get to see a more thorough idea of how these Polar Pro filters work in different situations. This Polar Pro Switchblade 7 and Dive Master filters are compatible with the GoPro Hero 5, 6, and 7. Though I imagine they will come out with one for the GoPro 8 soon, which I think will have to be different. Links to all the gear used in this video are in the video description below. All right, so let's start with snorkeling. The first consideration is to have a good selfie stick to attach to your GoPro. I used a Manfrotto 2-in-1 monopod pole and the Telesyn 36-inch selfie pole. The Telesyn pole also has a tripod and is lighter than the Manfrotto stick, but I prefer the Manfrotto because it is sturdier, has a better grip, and is longer at 52 inches fully extended. So it won't bend in the water and it's better for getting close-ups of fish and coral when you're snorkeling. It also has a ball head so you can twist it in the exact direction you want your GoPro camera to face. Now for scuba diving, the biggest factor is the depth at which you're diving. Keep in mind the GoPro works at about 35 feet underwater without a housing unit. For my dive, I didn't go deeper than that, but if you do, Polar Pro has filters for the GoPro housing unit as well. So as you go deeper, everything becomes bluer. If this is the look you're going for, great. You can just shoot normal without any filters. However, I found the red filter really helped. The red helped balance out the blue, creating a more pleasing and dynamic image, as you can see in these examples. While using the red filter, one creative shooting method I liked was shooting in the direction of the sun or so the sunlight beams are hitting your GoPro camera. This will enable you to get some really great reddish orange colored sun flare. The red filter really enhances sun flare. Light beams move in many directions underwater, so you have to experiment. This leads me to my next point, which is shooting in slow motion. I shot the entire time at 1080p at 240 frames per second or 240 FPS. This allowed me to capture these fish and coral in just the right moment in light because everything was slowed down. Nevertheless, I found it helpful to keep the camera still and try to frame up the shot as best as possible. Here are some of my favorite moments. Next, I would like to talk about the macro lens filter and issues I had while using the Polar Pro Switchblade 7 Super Sweet Edition. The macro lens magnetically stays in place with the red filter. However, if you use any other way of shooting, it can be a little frustrating. So let me explain. For example, if I only use the red filter, there's sometimes a reflection from the macro lens in the top center of my frame. 
And if I use the macro lens, there's sometimes a reflection of the red filter in the top center of my image. It doesn't happen often, and this is just a reflection, just the way that the light is bouncing off of either the red filter or the macro lens. This is why I recommend shooting with only one lens or filter. I just like using the red filter. It creates a great image and is very versatile. I found the macro lens doesn't really work in most situations. However, if you get really close to a fish or coral reef, it does work great. So it's a very specific lens. If you like to shoot really close to fish, coral, and other objects, the macro lens is the way to go. It is not my shooting style, which is why I mostly use the red filter or no filter or lens at all. Lastly, when shooting with only the GoPro, I found the macro lens would often swing into my shot and I would have to hold it up with my hand. This is why I recommend shooting with only the GoPro or just attaching one thing to the front of the camera. For me, it was the red filter, but it could be the macro lens as well. Like I said before, this Polar Pro Switchblade 7 and Dive Master filters are compatible with the GoPro Hero 5, 6, and 7, though I imagine they will come out with one for the GoPro Hero 8 soon, which I think will have to be different. Links to all this equipment used in this video that I talked about is in the video description below. All right guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please share it with a friend and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It's been fun hanging out with you. I'm Brett Garamella with BrettGaramella.com and I look forward to seeing you again in my next video.